Hello and welcome to a brand new tutorial review, this time taking a look at Red Giant's Offload. Now this is actually a really clever and simple application. When you're working in the field and you're constantly offloading media from different hard drives or even the same hard drives, it's really important that you find a really efficient way of offloading your footage onto your media hard drives and also a backup drive. Now. This is something that people often forget or think they can cut a corner on on lower budget productions. But the reality is, is it's really important to have a backup of your media as you are shooting because anything could go wrong. Hard drives, especially in the field, can easily get damaged and knocked and broken. So the last thing you want is to spend a whole day shooting and to lose all the media. It's just a filmmaker's worst choice, especially if you are working in a lower budget field, then reshoots really financially isn't an option. So Red Giant have come out with an application called Offload, which is very simply the best way to manage, copy and back up your footage in the field. It has a really simple user interface and as you will see, a really simple methodology. So the first thing you want to do when you open up Offload is to insert your media. So whether that's an SD card or a red drive, go ahead and plug it in and normally it will actually recognize that you've plugged in the drive straight away. However, if the drive was already in the computer when you loaded up Offload, that might not happen. So what you want to do is click on the select a source button in the top left hand corner and then choose your storage drive. Then it's going to come up with thumbnails of all the footage so you can have a look through and check that it's got all the files that you want. And then what you want to do is choose your two places you want to store it. So you press choose here and this looks absolutely fine to me. And you want to choose your backup drive and make sure you want to choose a, a different drive otherwise it completely defeats the point. The other cool features that it has is the subfolders option. If you select this you can choose to add a subfolder which is going to have an import number for the subfolder's name or you can choose a source name or a date. I would recommend actually if you're in the field choosing the date which is basically going to create a folder within your folder that you've selected and that folder is going to be called whatever date that you are offloading the footage. So we're going to go ahead and choose that and you can see it's got a format here, we can actually change that if we want. However, for the backup drive, I think this is way less important because ultimately the backup isn't necessarily going to be the main drive that you're going to be accessing constantly. It's more just to make sure that you've got an insurance copy of all your footage. And then, very simply, we can just go ahead and press start. And then we get a nice progress bar for each video as it copies it over. You can see we've got a copied file here and it gives you a lowdown of how it's going up here. Now bear in mind that obviously the read speed is limited so what that means is that as it's reading the files it can't simultaneously read multiple files and make copies from one drive to the other without sacrificing speed. If it's reading this file and this file it's going to be really slow if it's trying to copy to both drives at the same time so you want to just let it do its thing. But I mean, from my perspective, that's one area that could be changed if you could simultaneously write to different drives if your source medium or material is fast enough. However, that is largely not the case, especially if you're copying from an SD card like I am right now. The other useful bit of information it gives you is the different color codings uh, as it copies. So as it's orange and, and you can see the progress bar on each thumbnail, that means it's doing its first pass of copying. And then as um, the blue lines right over the top, as you can see here, that means that it's doing the second pass of writing over. So it means you're getting a very accurate copy. It's basically checking for any errors, which is something that if you just use Finder, you wouldn't necessarily have. However, I would prefer it if you could deselect certain clips and ignore them so that you didn't have to copy the entire contents of that drive. Also bear in mind that you don't actually have to make a backup. You can just copy to the OneDrive and then you can ignore this by right clicking and choosing reset destination folder. And there you go, there's no longer a backup that's going to be created, it's literally just copying to the OneDrive.
So that was my very simple and very quick tutorial review for Red Giant Offload, which I'd thoroughly recommend. It's very simple user interface will help you copy all of your materials simply and efficiently. And also it's going to write down a copying log into the destination folder which is going to tell you if you had any errors and then you can keep track of what you're importing with each import so it's going to provide you with extra tools and assets for your edit as it comes together so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys soon in a brand new tutorial review